Good morning, friend. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today we're just doing a lot of fun little projects that I need to check off the list. We've got a couple fun kitchen projects we're gonna start with. The first thing I wanna get going with in my Instant Pot is some homemade yogurt. I have just a little bit of store-bought yogurt left and I've got a half gallon of milk that needs to be used up. I buy my milk from a local farmer and I like to make homemade yogurt. So I'm gonna show you how to do it in the Instant Pot. It is so easy. I'm gonna hit the yogurt button and we're just gonna pour our milk into the Instant Pot. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a half gallon of yogurt because I just made homemade granola and yogurt and granola with a little bit of freezer jam on top is one of our favorite breakfasts in the summer. So I ended up actually turning off the yogurt mode and hitting the saute mode because I want this to heat up to 180 degrees a little bit quicker. To get a thicker yogurt, you need to heat your yogurt up to 180 degrees because what that does is it actually denatures some of the protein and so when it sets after it cultures, it creates a thicker yogurt. And we are gonna inoculate this yogurt with a probiotic, store-bought yogurt that has live active cultures in it. So I don't mind, basically we're pasteurizing this milk and denaturing the proteins. And that's why I'm doing it, because I wanna make sure that I'm gonna inoculate it with the bacteria that I want to inoculate it with so that we get a yogurt like the store-bought yogurt that I bought. So what am I looking for? I am looking for my thermometer. I'm gonna go ahead and get this in here. And I'm gonna get this turned on so that while I'm doing other projects, we can keep a close eye on this. I could let my yogurt do the entire process from start to finish in my Instant Pot, but I like to ferment my yogurt in my dehydrator, but my dehydrator is full of vanilla beans. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my vanilla beans out of here. So when we were cleaning up this pantry, I had a bunch of vanilla beans that were done making homemade vanilla extract. So if you missed it, I just took those vanilla beans after they were done making the vanilla extract and I threw them in the dehydrator. And what I'm gonna do with these vanilla beans is turn them into a delicious vanilla sugar. And I just let the sugar sit with these vanilla beans for some amount of time, no specific amount of time. And then come baking season, this will be a delicious, whoop, just dropped one, vanilla sugar. I think I could get two jars from this amount of beans. And it's a great way to maximize your use of vanilla beans because vanilla beans are expensive. And so instead of making vanilla extract and then tossing them, we're gonna get a whole nother use. And what it does is all the teeny tiny vanilla bean seeds work their way into the sugar and it creates this absolutely beautiful flavored sugar and colored sugar. So here you can see the vanilla beans are very teeny tiny. And now what I'm gonna do is get sugar in these jars. Sure I have lids for both of these. In that short amount of time to get the vanilla beans out of the dehydrator, we're already at almost 100 degrees. So now all I'm gonna do is come to my really big bucket of sugar and I'm going to pour sugar over top. I'm gonna have to sweep when I'm done because I'll probably spill a little bit. But I'm going to pour sugar over top of my vanilla beans. And you can use this in whatever you would use sugar that you want a little bit of vanilla flavor. So I usually don't use this in savory applications, but any sort of baking, this makes a beautiful, beautiful gift. I gifted quite a bit of this sugar around Christmas time, and a lot of my family and friends said they used it in their coffee, and it was incredible. They would make fancy lattes with it. So now all I'm gonna do is shake this around. I wanna make sure that lid is on very tight. And what we're doing there is we're kind of knocking around those vanilla beans and kind of releasing the seeds out of the vanilla bean pots. I'm gonna do my other jar. Just trying to maximize my vanilla investment. And this is the perfect time if you wanna make homemade vanilla extract, go ahead and get that started now if you want to gift it to your loved ones 
at the holidays. I should probably do that now that I'm thinking about it. I know I have some jars with some nice lids on it that seal and I haven't gifted homemade vanilla extract in a couple years. So I should probably put an order in for some vanilla beans because I currently don't have any vanilla extract going for myself either. So that'll be a project I'll have to do pretty soon. So I'm just gonna shake this up. Let this sit, I'll probably forget about it. That's what I did last time. I forgot about it for a couple months. And when I went to use it, it was incredible. I just ran up here and our yogurt is at 178. I was a little worried, I kind of forgot about it to be honest. So in that amount of time, I'm gonna let it come up to 180. Our yogurt is ready for the next step. Well, in just a second, it's steaming. You do not wanna boil it. You just want it to get to that high temperature and we are there. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just unplug it, put it over here, and we're gonna take this out of the Instant Pot so that it can actually cool down. I've got some projects I wanna do outside. We need this now to cool down to about 110 degrees. So actually I can leave that in there. I'm just gonna cover it so that, you know, things don't fall into it. Perfect, so I'm gonna put the lid on this and we're gonna go do projects outside while this cools down and then we can introduce our starter culture to it. If I was to take my starter culture and put it in here right now, it would kill any sort of culture because it's too hot. So we have to let this cool. You can do it this natural way where we're just gonna walk away from it and come back or you can stick it in an ice bath and cool it quickly, but I'm not in a hurry. So we're just gonna do it this way. It has been about an hour and a half. <laughs> Since last time I was looking at this yogurt, I did not head outside yet. We're gonna do that in just a bit. Life happened, and so I wanna check the temperature on this yogurt before we head out there. So this is non-homogenized milk, so the fat or the cream layer will come to the top, so that's what the yellowness on the top was. It's the actual cream. Okay, so we're pretty close. We're at one, basically, 140-ish, give or take two degrees. So 138, so we're gonna go ahead and come back in about 15 minutes and it should be ready for the next step. My Roma tomatoes need some maintenance, so that's what we're gonna go do next. So I need to grab my wheelbarrow and I've got some carrot seeds in here. I think I'm gonna leave these in here because I might plant a few carrots. I'm gonna take these guys out. I also wanna plant some lettuce while we're out there some more basil and some more lettuce. We've got some harvesting we're gonna do. So we are in the shed and I need to grab out, I don't know if I have enough, 22 I think tomato cages. These tomato cages I have used for four years and they were left at my last house from the previous owner and she used them before. She just left them at the house because she wanted to know if I wanted them and I said absolutely I would use them. And I don't know if I have enough. I've been using these for four years now. And I've never had this many Roma tomatoes so I might have to go pick a few more up at the store. Maybe I have enough. I'm gonna grab all that I have.
we did it. We made it down here without losing any of these. So the only tomatoes that I'm gonna be putting cages around are my Roma tomato plants. And I'm pretty sure I have 22 of them. And here's the first bed. The reason I'm putting tomato cages around these and not my tomato plants up there is Roma tomato plants only get to a certain size. They're kind of like a bush style tomato versus the tomatoes that I have up there are a vining style tomato. And so they want more vertical trellising. These do well with a cage. Over the years, I've had very good luck growing my Roma tomatoes in tomato cages because like I mentioned earlier, they are a bush variety of tomato or another word for that would be they are a determinate variety of tomato. They only grow to a determined size, which usually is about three and a half to four feet versus my indeterminate varieties of tomatoes that are a vining style tomato. They never stop growing. They just keep growing and growing and growing until frost or disease kills them. And so I have had terrible luck trying to grow indeterminate varieties of tomatoes on or in tomato cages. They do better growing in a vertical style trellis. And so knowing which type of tomato you're growing really is going to help because then you know what type of trellis to give them and you will have a better outcome with harvest and growing if you give them the proper trellising system. So it looks like I am way short. I need two more for this bed and then my bed down there doesn't have any yet. So I'll be running to the store later today to pick some of those up and cage these up. And then I, a couple people thought that these little plants right here were weeds. Those are not weeds. Those are actually status flowers that I planted and I'm just waiting for them to grow up. They just haven't flowered yet, unlike my beautiful snapdragons that are absolutely stunning. So I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 more tomato cages. And same, these plants right in the inside here, the ones toward the bottom of the ground, those are status flowers and the ones that are a little bit taller those are straw flowers. My hope is that those will kind of pop up in between the tomatoes and just be something really beautiful to look at. So now, because I don't have any more cages, I can get to planting. I want to plant some more basil and lettuce. I am running out of space. So what I think I'm gonna do is throw some seeds in between some of these tomato plants. I think what I'm gonna do is do staggered. So this will be basil between, this will be lettuce, basil, lettuce, basil. All I'm gonna do is kind of move the soil a little bit. And I'm gonna do a very heavy planting of lettuce here. I have cilantro right here in the front. I've been using different crops for cover crops. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this butter lettuce. Oh no, this is a free seed pack that I got from Baker Creek. And I'm just gonna sprinkle. That's gone. And then just very lightly cover that back up. Let's see what else I have. Let's do this lettuce next. I did not buy any lettuce seed this year. This is all just stuff I've had from the past. So I'm gonna plant it a little bit heavier just because most of it is at least a few years old. And this is pelleted seed. So I'm gonna put this whole seed pack right here, which says it's 50 seeds. And so some of those aren't gonna be viable anymore. Pelleted seeds don't have a very long shelf life. Those are probably two years old or so. Next, I'm just gonna do some romaine. For 
for the basil, I'm just gonna do a Genovese basil and I'm gonna do that between where I have the lettuce. When I went to a gardening class, they talked about using things like lettuce and spinach and herbs, cilantro as ground cover, as a way to prevent weeds. So instead of using the landscape fabric like I did this year, if I can get most of the kind of bottom of this bed to have something growing in it, I'll fight less weeds. Sprinkle half that seed packet here. These tomatoes will get pretty bushy. And what I'm hoping, because basil and lettuce are pretty heat sensitive, that it will start shading out this lettuce and the lettuce is gonna be ground cover to help prevent weeds and the tomato is gonna to be shade to help prevent bolting. And I'm just gonna go right back here. I'm gonna plant some basil back here. So now I have lettuce, basil, lettuce, basil, lettuce. And on the opposite side, I have lettuce, basil, lettuce, basil, lettuce. And I definitely won't remember that, which is fine because when they germinate, I can definitely tell the difference between lettuce and basil. But I'm excited to see how that goes. So I'm gonna do something different on around the tomatoes at the other end. I'm not gonna do that. And we'll just see if one of the beds does better than the other. I just had a friend stop by to say hi, and I was able to harvest a massive bouquet of snapdragons for her. So she got to go home with a big bouquet of snapdragons, which is one reason why I love to have flowers is I can gift the beautiful gift of flowers. My ranunculus are basically done for the year, so I couldn't give her any of those because the vase life on them would be probably a day or two. So I'm just keeping those out in the garden to enjoy to look at. I'm gonna go ahead and do a second harvest on this cilantro. So I am very happy. This is the second harvest of this size of cilantro. Plus I've gone out there many times and just harvested handfuls of cilantro to put on our dinners and lunches and breakfasts. I'm gonna wash my hands because at this point I'm sure our yogurt is ready for the next step. It's okay if it gets a little bit cooler than I wanted. Cooler is better than too hot. What I'm gonna do with this cilantro is freeze dry it just like I did the last batch, but I need to wash it first and I'll do that later. I do wanna go down and collect the chicken eggs, so we'll do that after I get going on this next step with the yogurt. So here you can clearly see the yellow on the top. That is the cream and I can just stir that in. And we are at 105, which is perfect. Now this is the yogurt I'm gonna use for my culture. You can use any yogurt that says live active cultures and then it lists the cultures that are in this and you can see we're almost out there's probably about a quarter of a cup in there so what i'm going to do nothing super fancy here i'm never exact or precise when it comes to this just when i have just a little bit of yogurt left and i feel like making yogurt i just take what's left in the container i add a little bit of our milk and i whisk that together And this is gonna inoculate our yogurt. I can tell that it's a little bit thicker.
You can buy specific yogurt cultures. I have never done that. I have always just used leftover yogurt that I have in my house. And now I'm gonna go ahead and pour, whoop, slash spill a little bit, but that's okay, my milk into quarts. And the reason I'm putting these in quart jars, not a half gallon jar, is because this is easier to serve when I go to serve it. Instead of having to dig into a half gallon jar, this is a lot easier. It looks like I have a little bit more. Let's see if I can get it to fit in there. I think we'll have one serving personal size container of yogurt. You could do all of these in personal size jars. I had never thought about that until just now. Instead of doing one or two big jars. Okay, so that's perfect. Now I'm gonna put these leak proof lids on here tight. just because I've had yogurt spill in my dehydrator before. And now all I'm gonna do is I do like to take a towel just because I've had this kind of drip out a little bit and it's easier in case it does and put that in the bottom of my dehydrator. I'm gonna lay my jars in here. They're nice and tight. Oh, that one I can stand straight up. I think on my bigger one I can stand quart size jars up but this is my smaller one. I've got it on about 108. I'm gonna turn it on. I will probably have these ferment for about eight hours. So right before I go to bed, maybe eight to 10, I'll pop these in my refrigerator. You can have your yogurt go up to 24 hours. The longer it ferments, the more of the culture is gonna eat the lactose and turn it into acid. So you're gonna get a more sour yogurt. So we don't like a 24 hour fermented yogurt. It's a little too sour for us. So usually about eight to 10 hours is perfect. So I'm gonna turn this on. I might turn it into Greek yogurt tomorrow. I haven't fully decided. All Greek yogurt is, if it's true Greek yogurt, is you take your yogurt and you strain it through some cheesecloth for about an hour or two and you remove some of the whey, the liquid part, and you get a thicker, creamier yogurt. And I haven't decided if I'm gonna do that yet. We like Greek, yo Greek yogurt around here, but I know that we will serve this with the homemade granola we made together in the last big cooking day and probably a little dollop of jam because that's how we like to eat our yogurt. We had rain for the last four days. So when it rains, they do come in a little bit dirtier. And look at this. That looks like that egg does not have a yolk on the inside. I have never seen that since they first started laying four years ago. Is that something that happens when chickens get older? Do they sometimes lay eggs without yolks in it? I'm gonna have to do some Googling because I am not sure about that. I know it's really common when they first start laying to lay eggs that don't have yolks in it, but I haven't seen that since they were just wee little chicks. What I need to do is go in and wash these eggs while they're still intact and while I remember that they're in my pocket because I have definitely put eggs in my pockets and forgot that they were there and smushed them and that's the last thing I wanna do. I got the eggs all washed up. I had a few extra eggs laying around the kitchen that needed to be washed. So I'm gonna get these in cartons and I can pop these in the fridge. The next project I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and wash up the cilantro and get this in the freeze dryer. I'll probably put a big handful into the refrigerator that's washed up so that I can use that in the next couple days whenever we need cilantro. And we were able to get quite a few just small little projects kind of chicked off, chicked, ticked off the list. We got our yogurt made, we got our vanilla sugar made, cilantro harvested, a few more seeds in the ground. And the only thing I couldn't finish is I need to go and get some more tomato cages next time in town. I probably won't make a trip just to go get those next time I'm in town. I'll just pick a couple extra up and that way we can go ahead and get those tomatoes caged. They will be fine if they go another few days without being in the cages. I just don't want them to get too incredibly big because then it is hard to kind of put the cage around them. And maybe I'll experiment. I've seen the square ones that are a little bit bigger Maybe I'll try picking up some of those and doing a side-by-side -side comparison. I'm not exactly sure. I have to go to the store and see what I'm looking at before I fully decide what I'm gonna pick up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this washed up and put this in the freeze dryer. I just showed you how I did this. I'm gonna do the exact same process, wash it in my salad spinner, tap it, pat it dry, put it in the freeze dryer, and then in, it only took about 12 hours, I think, and it was completely freeze dried, and I'm absolutely loving it. I can actually show it to you right here. One big, colander like that gave me a half gallon of cilantro that I am going to try to save and not use 
until there's no more fresh cilantro coming in out of the garden. Once I can't harvest fresh cilantro for fresh cooking, then I will break into the freeze dried cilantro. But this stuff is incredible. It smells and tastes just like fresh cilantro when used in things like salsas and pico de gallo and whatever type of cooking you want cilantro for. So I'm hoping that we will get another half gallon worth of cilantro out of this because I did save some and put it in the fridge and use that for fresh cooking. And I also threw some in the freezer, which I have not broken into. Next time I use cilantro in cooking, I will break out the stuff that I froze so that we can see how well it freezes. Some of you have said you've had good luck with freezing cilantro and some have said you have had poor luck freezing cilantro. So I'm curious, I've never done it. So we will see next time I need to use it in a cooked application. I did read that you only wanna use frozen cilantro in cooked applications because it gets kind of wilty versus freeze dried you can use in fresh applications like salsas and things like that. It's the next day and I'm just making a quick slaw and I'm gonna use yogurt as part of the dressing. I already put a bunch of lime and salt. I'm gonna put some chipotle powder on there in a second. And let's see, I opened this one already. I wanted to show you how thick this yogurt came out. This is not me straining it. This is right out of the dehydrator and into the refrigerator overnight. And it's thick and beautiful. So I don't think I'm gonna turn this into Greek yogurt. And look how awesome this turned out. You can see this little yellow on the top. That yellow is the cream. So that's technically sour cream. And this down here is yogurt. I'll just mix all of that together and we'll have a nice rich yogurt. But this has me thinking that it would be fun to do some individual size yogurts, even in the half pint jars and have individual yogurts in there. And then I could flavor those up and they'd be ready for the week. But anyway, I wanted to show you that. This is cabbage, onions, tomatoes, some yogurt, tons of lime, salt, tons of cilantro from the garden. And then I'm gonna put some chipotle powder. That is going to be part of our dinner tonight. So friend, thank you so much for taking time again out of your day to spend time with me. If you wanna watch some of my other videos, I'll pop those here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I hope you are having a fantastic day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.